in india we muslim the minority according to government 14 and a half percent muslim say we are about 20 25 percent but if we agree with 14 and a half percent also the here the non muslims the hindus are 6.3 percent 6.4 percent the hindus in malaysia get more than 100 times more rights than the muslims in india good alhamdulillah i'm not saying take away their rights good this is what muslims should do they are half the percentage numbers wise very less half the percentage of india where muslims are <clears throat> yet the rights they get here is 100 times more than what india gives rights to minority so much so that they support the prime minister of india but not prime minister of malaysia mashallah the prime minister of india wants me the prime minister of malaysia does not want injustice to be done to me the hindu malaysian are most of them supporting prime minister of india there is no evidence about me in the malaysian police interpol says no evidence they are believing more in india they are more indian than the malaysian themselves and yet they are enjoying alhamdulillah at least the Muslims should get their rights. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give more hikmah, more courage to Malaysia to voice out for the rights of the Muslims throughout the world. Hope that answers the question. My name is Muhammad Adi bin Muhammad Sa'ad. An officer from the office of Chief Minister of Kelantan. I would like to ask Doctor a question. Okay, recently, Indian government has deleted Article 370 from its constitution due to the misconceptions upon our uh, uh, Kashmir towards the uh, state of Kashmir, resulting Kashmir has no more autonomy power to go regulate this affairs. Some say that it will become the next Palestine. I hope that uh, it should be, uh, it should not be happen. So, what is your comments about this uh, particular issue? And then, how, as we, as state government and people of Malaysia and a brother in Islam towards Kashmir people, to react on this particular issue? Thank you very much, Doctor. As far as the dishes, the decision taken by Indian government recently, by the BJP government, especially Narendra Modi, is to repeal or cancel the Act Number 370 in the Constitution. It's unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional. Because you know that Kashmir was independent land. When the partition took place between India and Pakistan, Kashmir became a part with having clauses it's independent and no one can buy any property there, no one can become a citizen. All these clauses were there, which slowly, slowly, many of the clauses were not followed. Now the main clause of 370, they want to repeal it and they want to make it into a union territory, which is unconstitutional. But there is a law in the government that if you have two-third majority in the upper house and the lower house, if you have majority in the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha, you can change the constitution. That's the reason they are changing now, which have many repercussions. What should be done? I believe that the Muslims all over the world should object to it and put as much as pressure as possible to undo this. And as you said rightly, that they are doing something what similar happened in what happened in Palestine. And Palestine, we know it belonged to the Muslims to the Palestinians. During the war, they gave the Jews a just shelter. They gave them shelter and they took away the full house. And now when the Palestinians are crying that give back a house, you're calling Palestinians a terrorist. Same thing is happening in Kashmir. And you know, they're trying to do a survey of which model works. And if they think that the Palestinian model worked, but at least for the Palestinian cause, Alhamdulillah, to a great extent, the Muslims were united. 
Not that we could protect it completely, but Alhamdulillah, to a great extent, we were united. But the other issues, we are not. I don't know how far will the Muslim countries react to this, but logically speaking, Islamically speaking, all the Muslim countries should unite and try and protect the rights of the Kashmiris. All should, all the Muslim countries should unite. Will they or not? Allah wala. Seeing the situation of the Muslim that we are today, we are going far and far away from the Quran and the Sunnah. We are more bothered about maintaining our seat, our chair, our position, our power, rather than following Allah and His Rasul. The day we follow Allah and His Rasul, we secure our seat in Jannah. And the topic yesterday was Quran, the part to happiness. And I said that securing a seat in Jannah is more, is more important than securing a seat in this world. This seat that you have in the world is temporary. You are like a traveler, the Prophet said. Unfortunately, the state of the Muslim Ummah is, is very pathetic. Very pathetic. We aren't raising the voice. And we came to know about the Uyghur Muslims. Today, the Muslims that are harassed the most in the world, according to me, it's not the Palestinian, it is the Chinese Uyghur Muslims. That Muslims in the Xinjiang area. And according to the reports of various human organizations, and various organizations for human rights, they say one to two million Muslim, Uyghur Muslim in China, they have been imprisoned in concentration camps, <clears throat> which they call as education camps. And they started in 2015. Previously, the harassment was less. It came in the light to the public, to some of the human rights organizations in 2017, was known to the world in starting 2000. 17, 2016, they came to know, and now it is more common, so common that many of the human rights organizations objected, and recently, last month, in July, there were 22 countries who objected to the violation of human rights in China. And do you know, out of the 22 countries, not a single country was a Muslim-majority country. Not a single. 22, most of them European countries, 100% non-Muslim countries, they laid an objection in the UN, United Nations, against China for violation of human rights. Shocking, not a single Muslim country. Some give the example, we don't know. <laughs> you don't know. That news was not as bad as the news I got after a few days. The news we get after a few days that 37 countries, 37 countries supported China and wrote a letter to UN that China is not violating the human rights. They are doing counter-terrorism. They are right. 37 countries. And the shocking part of it is little, le little less than 50% of these countries, they were Muslim-majority countries. About 15 to 16 Muslim countries out of 37 countries, majority country, they wrote a letter to UN, what China is doing is right. They are torturing the Muslims, it's not torture, it's good education, re-education camp. I can understand that some, most of the Muslims, 100% all, not most, all the Muslim countries were scared because China is a superpower, can understand. That China is a superpower, so if we speak, there may be economic embargo, etc., etc. A beloved prophet said, if you see something wrong, number one, if you can stop it with your hand, stop it with your hand. Number two, if you cannot stop with your hand, at least stop with the tongue. If you cannot stop with the tongue, at least curse in your heart. And if you curse in your heart, you will be the lowest level of mu'min believer. Can say maybe all these Muslim countries, you know, they are scared and all. So maybe they did not object. Maybe Allah will forgive them. Allah wala. Maybe Allah wala. 
But later on, about 16 Muslim countries agreeing with the haram activity, Allah will never forgive them. Good news is, Alhamdulillah, Malaysia is not one of those countries who said that China is right. We can understand that China is a powerful country. Maybe you could not object. Allah will forgive. Alhamdulillah, Malaysia did not sign the letter that what China is doing is right. So they are quiet. Believe me, if you fear Allah, you will not fear anyone else. The problem is the Muslims fear other people more than Allah. <clears throat> if you know that our main destination is Akhira, our main destination is that we have to go to Jannah. The problem is we are not good businessmen. I would like to give you the example of Abu Darda. May Allah be pleased with him. That once when a new Muslim was making a house boundary for himself, the neighbor, the Jewish house, in his house was a date palm tree coming into the house of that new Muslim. So he could not build the wall. And the Jewish said, you dare touch my tree. And there was a big problem, so he came to the Prophet. That, you know, this neighbor's Jewish tree is coming in the way. I cannot build the boundary. So the Prophet calls the Jew and tells him that if you let this date palm grow, give it to him. I will give you one tree in Jannah. The Jew said, are you crazy? <laughs> I don't want it. I'm happy with my date palm here. So Abu Darda, may Allah be pleased with him, he owned one of the best gardens of date palm in Medina. He goes to the prophet and asks him, that if I can get the date palm tree for that Muslim, will I get a date palm tree in Jannah? The Prophet says, yes, of course. So Abu Darda goes to that Jew and tells me that, do you know who you am? Who am I? He says, no, I don't know who you are. I'm Abu Darda. Ah, Abu Darda that owns one of the best date palm tree in Medina. Yeah, what can I do for you? He gives him an offer. That if you give me this one date palm tree, I will give you my full garden, 100%. The Jewish said, are you crazy? I said, no. Wallah, I will give it to you. So he said, okay. So he said, fine. He gets that tree and gives it to that new Muslim. And he goes and tells his wife that today I have clicked a deal. I said, what have you done? He says that I have exchanged of a full garden of date palm for one tree in Jannah. And the reply of the wife was, ah, what a deal. Today people will say, you're crazy. You should have given half the garden. Surely in half the garden also that you would have given the tree. Yes or no? Yes or no? Even if he had given quarter garden, he would have given that one tree. But the wife replies of Abu Darda, Ah, what a deal you have clicked. Today's wife will say, Beowulf, fool, idiot. Okay, you want a tree in Jannah? Give quarter garden. Why full garden? Because they knew the value of Jannah. Imagine they're giving up all the wealth and the, and the Sira tells us of the Sahaba that till the end of his life he lived in poverty, not that he had wealth. He gave his full wealth away for one tree in Jannah. This is the Iman that the Sabas had. His full wealth only for one tree in Jannah, which you could have even given quarter and you would have got it. And the wife agrees, what a deal. So today, unfortunately, we are so afraid. We are so possessive of our wealth, so possessive of our things. Imagine when our Muslim brothers are dying, they are being killed, they are being tortured. In China, at least in Palestine, they can pray openly. In Palestine, they can fight openly, they can do jihad openly. They can fast. 
in China, the Singh and Muslim, most of them aren't allowed to pray. They aren't allowed to fast. They are forced to drink alcohol in Ramadan. If you object, they put you in concentration camp called as re-education camps. What are we doing? There's so much of evidence available. Some countries say we Muslim countries say we don't have evidence. So what we realize that we Muslims, we haven't understood the real value, which is gold. If we follow the Quran and the seed of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we'll be in a much better position. The happiness that we'll get in our life, which we discussed yesterday, it's tremendous. The problem is we don't read the Quran, we don't understand the Quran, we don't read the Hadith, we don't implement on it. Happiness doesn't come by wealth. Happiness doesn't come by position. Happiness doesn't come by power. Happiness doesn't come by gold. It comes with the satisfaction in your heart and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in a very pathetic situation and history is repeating itself. Now they're doing it in India. When they could do it in Palestine, what were the Muslims doing? They're in China, what are the Muslims doing? So what do we expect the Muslims to do when they're doing in India? I can talk. I'm talking. I knew that I talked in India and high chances I'll be thrown out. Okay. At least I stayed for 25 years. I thought it would be much more earlier. Alhamdulillah. We are doing it for our Jannah Akhira. Why aren't the Muslims united on this issue? I'm talking about the Islamic issue. I'm not a politician. I don't want to be involved in the politics. But we Muslims should unite. And Alhamdulillah, one of the reasons that according to me, amongst the Muslim countries in the world, one of the best countries available in the world is Malaysia. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Malaysia continue being the best. We always saw Malaysia fighting for the Palestinian rights, fighting for the Rohingya rights. We hope it continues. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the Malaysian the guts and the power. It's a small country, no problem. But if you have the power of Allah, it becomes the most powerful country. But if you want Allah on your side, then you'll become the powerful country. If you don't want Allah on your side, you won't become powerful. So to make it the most powerful country, who do you require? Allah on your side. So if you follow the commandment of Allah and follow the commandment of beloved prophet in the hadith, you'll become the most powerful country. But if you have faith in Allah, I chose to live in Malaysia because amongst the various, I had offers from about 15 countries. I felt Malaysia amongst, you could say, best of the worst or best available, whatever you want to say, among the Muslim countries. We have 56 majority Muslim countries. I chose that it is good, it's away from the war zone. No, it's not like you see Gulf countries, Yemen, Syria, war zone. Number two, it doesn't have so much of pressure from the Western countries like the other Muslim countries. Number three, it's a country which has the most powerful Muslim passport. 180 countries you can travel without visa. I don't know if all of you, some may be knowing, all may not be keeping track of it. You go to the Henley's passport, 180 countries without visa. It's an advanced country. It's a country where the federal religion is Islam. You have about two-thirds Muslims living. It's good. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may the Muslims of Malaysia be united. If you are united, you are a stronger force. If you are divided, you'll become weak. So my only advice or suggestion to Muslims all over the world, including Muslims of Malaysia, for Allah's sake, let your differences aside, and for the cause of Islam, we should unite. And this has been my message always for all the Muslims. If we are united, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah 
Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 103. Wa tathimu bihabli lai jamia wala tafarku. Hold strongly to the rope of Allah and be not divided. So if you unite, the best criteria where we can unite is on the basis of Quran. Whatever the Quran says, at least that is the common factor of Muslims throughout the world. Whether you live in West, East, Arab country, non-Arab country, this is the uniting factor. And inshallah, if we, if we have this uniting factor, there will not be situation like Palestine or China or India 370, what happened in Afghanistan, what happened in Iraq. And I was happy in Iraq, I was happy that mashallah, there was, like we have the International Court of Law in Hague, a similar one was started in Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur war crimes, KLWC. And in, I think in the year 2011, if I'm not mistaken, it was started by Tun Dr. Mahathir. And they had the guts and, alhamdulillah, the courage that they had a tribunal of five judges. They had lawyers from different parts of the world. And they put to trial the previous president of USA, George Bush, and the previous president of UK, Tony Blair. And, alhamdulillah, I really admire the guts. No Muslim country had the guts, but Malaysia had the guts. In the war crime tribunal, they laid and they said the people responsible for fabricating evidence is the former president of USA, George Bush and Tony Blair. If they set foot in Malaysia, we will arrest them. MashaAllah. Malaysia, small country, had the guts to challenge the superpower with the help of Allah. And they did it. Later on, five years later, 2016, in UK, the Chircot report, they say that America and UK fabricated evidence to show that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction to attack Iraq. So what does Tony Blair come and say? It is, I am very sorry, I regret, the most act I regret ever in my life is this act. That's it. Sorry. You know, more than a million people died, thousands of people in the war, and because of the sanction, millions of children died, and adults died because of sanctions. Only sorry. At least Malaysia, they had the KLWC, Kuala Lumpur war crime, Alhamdulillah. I wish such more tribunals are set up here. And if they can object same way with China, if they can object same thing with India, and all the, we cannot, I'm not telling you do violently. Okay, at least have such, we have the KLWC. Okay, there you can do it. I mean, my suggestion. At least you can say one Muslim country in the world, the non-Muslim 22 countries, maybe some may be having benefit or some agenda, whatever it is. At least they stood for the truth. Similarly, what's happening in India? In India, we Muslim the minority, according to government, 14.5%. Muslims say we are about 20-25%, but if we agree with 14.5% also. The, here are the non-Muslims, the Hindus are 6.3%, 6.4%. The Hindus in Malaysia get more than 100 times more rights than the Muslims in India. Good, Alhamdulillah, I'm not saying take away their rights. Good, this is what Muslims should do. They are half the percentage, numbers wise very less, half the percentage of India, where Muslims are. <clears throat> Yet the rights they get here is 100 times more than what India gives rights to minority. So much so that they support the Prime Minister of India but not Prime Minister of Malaysia. MashaAllah. The Prime Minister of India wants me. The Prime Minister of Malaysia does not 
want injustice to be done to me. The Hindu Malaysians are most of them supporting Prime Minister of India. There is no evidence about me in the Malaysian police. Interpol says no evidence. They are believing more in India. They are more Indians than the Malaysians themselves. And yet, they are enjoying, alhamdulillah. At least the Muslims should get their rights. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give more hikmah, more courage to Malaysia to voice out for the rights of the Muslims throughout the world. Hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm.